Good morning, friends. Um, my your brother Elisha Odero coming to you from Mustard Christian Center, Kisi. I want us to reflect on uh, Mark chapter four. The Bible talks of a time when Jesus told the disciples that we cross over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee for greater ministry, for higher ministry. They quickly got into a boat and uh, took sail into the sea. While they were at sea, a storm rose up and almost killed them. They initially began by getting water out of the boat and trying to stabilize the boat. When it didn't work, they called on Jesus Christ and they said, Master, don't you care we perish? And he stood up, rebuked the wind, and the storm died, and the sea was calm. And Mark records that immediately they crossed over, they found themselves on the other side of the sea. As you reflect on the pandemic, on the challenge you have in the world today, allow me to use this text, this story, to help us think through. Number one, it is Jesus who initiated the journey. He's the one who said, let us cross over to the other side. I want to encourage us that the Bible talks of him as the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says that he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning, and therefore he will end it. The Bible says that faithful is the one who called you. He will also complete it. Whenever God starts something, he will complete it. Our walk, our lives, this universe, this world is God's world. He began it. He will also finish it. Secondly, the Bible says when they began the journey, they encountered a storm. And this world has known storms. This world has known pandemics. We've come through Noah's flood. We are aware of the plagues of Egypt. We know about Sodom and Gomorrah that are burnt down to ashes. When David numbered the people, we know thousands of people died in God's wrath. We have had a lot of famines. We have had wars, the Napoleonic Wars, the World Wars. We have had earthquakes. We have had tsunamis. We have had terrible diseases and plagues. We have had HIV and AIDS, which had also been a pandemic, currently being overcome. This world has seen or has had a fair share of trouble. Not only have we had global pandemics. We have also had localized ones, like the war in Lagos, Yugoslavia, like the Ethiopian famine, like the locusts that invaded some parts of this country. The world has seen pain. Millions of lives have been lost in calamities, in disasters, in wars. But apart from those localized and global struggles, I'm aware that individuals, families, and localized communities are also having their own pandemics, their own challenges, their own struggles, their own pains. Yes, the world is thinking of COVID-19, but there are several covid 19 going on, both personal and family and communal. And you know, whenever calamity strikes, people react. The disciples initially did two things. They began to get water out of the boat. But the more they got this water out, the more water came in. I'm sure they also, as good seamen, they tried to stabilize the boat. And this never worked. But I want to thank God for their effort, the human effort. Whenever calamities strike, over the years, human beings have at least tried to do something to salvage the situation. R relief, medical assistance, things like that. You see, as we talk now, I want to thank God for our scientists. They're working day and night to explain the causes and the origins and to find out if there are solutions to the situation we have. 
May God bless them. God gave us brains. God gave us the ability. God gave us resources so that we can mitigate the challenges we face as a community. We also have people who are now getting into rituals. They think that if they do certain rituals, this pandemic could be averted. Of course, we also have the conspiracy theorists who say this pandemic is caused by some political maneuvering. Some darkened, some men with darkened mind are hiding somewhere trying to control the world. And in every pandemic, in every catastrophe and calamity, you have thousands and thousands of conspiracy theories. I would like to urge us, please, be careful of conspiracy theories. They have been there all the time, and they are still there today. You see, for Christians and for religious people, there's always the desire to interpret and give religious explanations to what is going on. And sometimes we think it's a judgment from God on this world. And sometimes we think God is trying to send a message to the world. Sometimes we think it's the end of the world. I know there are many brothers and sisters who have postured that this is the end of the world. The Antichrist is coming. One world religion, one world government. I ought to warn you, Jesus said, there'll be wars, there'll be rumors of war, there'll be pandemics, there'll be catastrophes. And he said, when you see these things, the end is not yet. He told us that. So really from the words of Jesus, it's not the end of the world. Yes, it's coming soon, but this is not the end of the world. Be clear-minded, child of God. But if it's not the end of the world and we're in this pandemic, what are we supposed to do? You can learn a few lessons from the disciples. Get water that is getting into the boat. Stop the infections. Use your mind. Use your strength. Use the resources God has given us to stop water, more water from getting into the boat. And what is in the boat, please, let's get it out. Could this be pointing it to the, 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 the advice to follow the guidelines that have been given by the Ministry of Health and World Health Organization? Should we ignore it? Let's think about it. We've been called to take care of ourselves so that we don't get infected. Water does not get into the boat. As a church leader, I need to protect my flock. What will I benefit if they get infected, go to quarantine, and we lose some of them? Yes, I'm a shepherd. I must protect the people that God has put under my care. Some have faith. Some don't have faith. Some have faith 100%. Others have faith 1%. And in our church, we also have non-believers. And on a Sunday service, we have visitors who have just come to church for the first time in their lives. You, you, I don't know who is going to come to church. They are coming from all over. You don't know where they have been to. And is God calling me to get water out of the boat and to protect the boat from getting in filled with water? Think about it, my dear brother and sister. Then the Bible says that they were steadying the, I'm sure they were steadying the boat, trying to make sure it doesn't capsize. Could God be telling us to adjust to the storm? Yes, the storm is there. The, tom, the storm might not adjust, but we need to adjust to a new lifestyle, what they call the new normal, to adjust to the season. You know, seasons never change, but we change. In July, we put on jackets and sweaters, but around August and September, we can put on a T-shirt. When it's cold, we change our dress code. When it's hot, we change again. And in this pandemic, could God be speaking to us to adjust in a new way where we can do our ministry and serve God's people without risking anyone's life, especially those who are of small faith for their healing and protection. The Bible tells us to take care of the weak among us. Is God calling us to take care of them and to adjust? Then number three, the Bible says, when they came to the end of the terror, they called on Jesus. They said, Master, don't we care? Don't you care we perish? Jesus is the author and the finisher. 
is the one who initiated the journey. He's the creator and the master of the sea and is the head of the church. Jesus is the captain of this boat. In our struggle, in the things we do, let us call on Jesus. Let's trust him. Let's focus on him. Let's believe that God is taking us through this. Together with our scientists and our doctors and our medical teams, we're using all the weapons we have to fight this disease, all our energy, all that God has given us to fight this enemy. As we do that, let's focus on Christ. Let's draw energy from him. Let's draw inspiration from him. Let's call on him. He created this world. He created everything in it and God has a solution for what you're going through. Let's look up and say, Master, we're perishing. Do something, Lord. Do something. And he woke up from his sleep and he spoke to the storm and the wind died and the storm calmed and the Bible says they got over to the other side of the lake. You know what? In conclusion, there is hope and this hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He began this journey. He'll finish it with us. Let's pray together that this nation, that this world may renew their focus on the Lord Jesus Christ in the middle of this storm. Christ is our hope. We can call on him. I urge the Christian people to rise up in prayer. I urge the Christian people to call on Jesus. As our doctors and medical personnel work, as the scientists also do their part, may the church do her part also by calling on the name of the Lord. Master, don't you care that we perish? And the hope we have in him is that when he takes over, we are going to cross over to the other side. For us, life is eternity. For us, the other side is eternal life forever in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our brothers and sisters who have gone ahead of us to, due to COVID-19 or other causes, they have gone ahead of us to a better life and a greater life. All of us will one day get to the other side. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will take us through. We are going to get to our destination. God is a captain. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the author, and finish of our faith. He's a captain of our faith and the high priest of our confession. Jesus, you are alive and you know what the world is going through and the pain and the suffering. Lord Jesus, lead your church in these great times. But Lord Jesus, stretch your hand to heal, to deliver. Guide us, O oh great God, to the other side of the shore beyond the storms. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brethren. Have a good time.